Hello there, Disney fans. So let's be honest, if you like me, you absolutely love Disney movies. But there are a few movies that I just wish would have ended a little bit better. In some cases, the original ending is super bad, and in other cases, it's pretty good, but it could just be a little teensy bit better. So that's why in today's video, I am breaking down Disney movies that I wish had different endings. mentioning why I think the ending is bad, but I'm also going to be talking about ways that they could have made the ending better. And trust me, some of these alternative endings are mind-blowing. They take a movie from good to great to exceptionally great. So just keep watching. But before I get started, be sure to like this video and subscribe because actually a ton of our viewers aren't even subscribed to our channel. What's that all about? So let's go ahead and fix that and hit the notification bell while you're at it. So in no particular order, these are the Disney movies that I wish had different endings. First up is Frozen. So Frozen, we all know, is the worldwide mega hit. Everybody and their mom was singing Let It Go in 2013, 2014. And it really is a fantastic movie. It has everything you're looking for in a Disney animated film. It has princesses, not just one, but two princesses. It has incredible songs. It has beautiful animation. It just has that whole fairy tale Disney vibe that we have grown to love. The ending is actually pretty amazing with Anna sacrificing herself, an act of true love, for her sister Elsa. However, there is one tiny change that I wish they would have made that would have taken this film from amazing to best Disney film of all time. And this comes at the moment right after Anna is turned into ice. In the movie, Anna just sacrificed herself and it really takes only a few seconds for Elsa to realize this, to feel super sad, but then for Anna to come back to life. So yes, her frozen heart did get the best of her and turned her into ice. However, her act of true love is what broke the spell. Now this is where I would change things. Between the time when she gets frozen and she comes back to life, I want Elsa to sing a reprise of Do You Want to Build a Snowman? If you remember, Do You Want to Build a Snowman is the song that Anna sings to Elsa as they are growing up. And Elsa, time and time again, repeatedly shuts Anna out. Elsa never sings in this song, she never responds back. But how cool would it be if during this part, Elsa finally sings, do you want to build a snowman? So Elsa can finally say, do you want to build a snowman? And she'll say, yes, I want to play. And she could just sing this really touching, slow rendition. It kind of reminds me of in Aladdin, when Aladdin sings the one jump reprise. After he's been shut out and he sings, riff raff, street rat, I don't buy that. And it's just such a tender moment and everyone loves it. I think a slow, tender reprise just like that, but in this moment in Frozen, would really take this moment up a notch. And I'm not the only person who thinks this. There's actually a few fan renditions on YouTube, so I'll include a link to my favorite one down below, just so you can imagine this Do You Want to Build a Snowman reprise in all its glory. Please, are you still in there? Anna, no, what have I done? Next up is Princess and the Frog. So at the very end of Princess and the Frog, Naveen and Tiana are together and they are dancing and life is great. But what about Charlotte? I would do it. I would kiss a frog. I would kiss a hundred frogs if I could marry a prince and be a princess. <laughs> All Charlotte has ever wanted is to be a princess, and so she finds a prince with Naveen's little brother. Except the problem is, he's like five, six, four. Way, way, way too young. It's a funny gag, like she's willing to wait, but it's kind of not funny. <laughs> Who'd have thought the prince would have had a younger brother? <laughs> How old did you say you were? I'm six and a half. Well, I waited this long. Obviously, Charlotte is never going to change and she's always been the same. However, what I think would have made this moment even better is if she finally gave up her dreams of finding a prince and just found a man that she was in love with. If you remember at the beginning of the film at Charlotte's Ball, there is a guy named Travis who is dressed up like a court jester and he asks her to dance. That dance doesn't end up happening and nothing happens of that. Oh. Travis, when a woman says later, she really means not ever. Now run along. But what if at the end of the movie, he asks her to dance again and she actually starts falling for him? It would be a really cute moment and it would show a little bit more character growth with Charlotte where ultimately what she wanted isn't what she needed. It would just be a great juxtaposition of seeing Tiana who never cared about being a princess or getting a prince, she getting that, and then Charlotte who that's all she ever wanted in her life actually find someone better for her who is not a prince. Next up is Pocahontas. 
At the end of Pocahontas, we see that John Smith has to go back to England and Pocahontas stays at home with her people. And at the very end of the film, they had this epic love story, they were from two different worlds, yet they fell in love anyway. However, real life kind of got in the way and they realized, eh, we can't really make this work, so they go their separate ways. So in these final moments, we see John Smith going away on his boat and Pocahontas, she's running like the wind, she goes to her favorite cliff, and then we wave. <laughs> That's it. Ah, nah. To be honest, it's pretty anticlimactic and it's just like, bye, see you later, see you never. And I don't really know how they would change this. I do like the fact that we don't get our typical fairy tale happy ending where they end up together. Sometimes in real life, that just doesn't happen no matter how in love you are. So he goes to separate ways, she goes to separate ways, but could there have been a better way than just a lame wave? Let me know in the comments below how you would have changed this scene. Up next, Hercules. The ending of Hercules has bothered me ever since I saw it in theaters because it just doesn't make sense. For his entire life, Hercules has just wanted to be somewhere where he would be accepted, somewhere that is finally home. And for him, because he is a god, that is at Mount Olympus. That is his home. That's where he needs to be. No wonder these measly humans didn't accept you because you're not one of them. You have a higher calling. You are a god. So for the whole movie, he's working towards this thing. He only wants to be a hero, not to get fame and fortune, but simply so he can regain his status on Mount Olympus. So when he finally proves that he's a true hero, what does he do? He gives it up for a girl. Giving up exaltation for love? That's short-sighted. And I get what they were trying to do here, true love conquers all, but she's mortal and she's gonna die. And you just gave up your immortality, so you're gonna die too. Why don't you have your cake and eat it too, become a god, and then visit Megara on Earth? If you've ever read Greek mythology, you know that these Greek gods are not strangers to hanging out with mortals and hanging out on Earth. So what's to stop Hercules from doing that? How come just because you're a god, you can no longer be with Meg? This way we get the resolution of him becoming a god, going back with his family, being with his people, embracing his destiny and who he truly is. And hey, he gets to hang out with Meg for the next 70 years until she dies. Sounds pretty good to me. And I get it, it's not as romantic of an ending, but I think it's way better. Next up, Aladdin. Aladdin is my number one favorite Disney animated film of all time. I like this movie. I've probably watched it over 1000 times at this point. And I'm not even kidding. And while I give this film a five out of five stars, I still have a tiny little nitpick that I think would have made this even better. So at the end of the movie, Aladdin and Jasmine are together. We see them at the end. They're wearing their supposed wedding clothes, except for it's not their wedding clothes because we realize they don't actually get married until the third movie. So scratch that. And they sing a little mini reprise of A Whole New World while on the magic carpet and they float off into the sunset. And to give you that last little dash of humor before the movie ends, we have the genie who is pretending to be the moon. He's laughing and at the very end says, made you look, which totally goes in line with the genie and his character. However, if you remember back to the beginning of the movie, it starts out with this peddler who tells us the tale of Aladdin. This is no ordinary lamp. It once changed the course of a young man's life. A young man who liked this lamp was more than what he seemed. How does he know this story, you ask? Because he's actually the genie. Unfortunately, we don't ever get this payoff in the film. We never go back to the peddler to reveal his identity as the genie all along. Initially, this ending was storyboarded and was part of the original script, but they decided to cut it. Are you sure you don't want to buy this lamp? Like I told you, things are never quite what they seem. <laughs> <laughs> and I get it, it might have ruined the momentum going back to him or introducing him again, like who was that? That guy? Instead of ending on this amazing high note of Aladdin and Jasmine singing. But I'm not gonna give up that easily. I still think there would have been a really simple, easy way to tie him in. It could just be a quick little cameo where he appears and a little nod to the audience. I don't know how they would have done it, but I wish they would have included it to make the story come full circle. Next up, Toy Story 4. And guys, I saved the best for last because this one is so good. Now, Toy Story 4, let's be honest, of all the Toy Story films is my least favorite of all of them. And I'm not going to go into that today. I did a podcast episode all about that, so I'll include a link to the show notes if you wanna check out that review. But despite me not necessarily liking the film, I feel like I would have liked the film better if they changed this one thing. So one of the big problems that I have with this movie was basically the fact that Woody was forced to give up his voice box to Gabby Gabby. Gabby Gabby never had a properly working voice box and she always felt that she was missing out on something in life. The reason that she was not successful, she never had a kid, was because of her voice box. And basically after she coerces Woody to harvest her organs, oh. 
Yay! Whoa. <laughs> you are my best friend. Let's play all day. Oh, Benson. Did you hear that? Isn't that lovely? Time for tea. Yeah, that happened in a Pixar film. She has her opportunity with Harmony. And just like that, the moment she's always been waiting for, Harmony kicks her to the curb. Little doll. You can take it home if you want. Meh. So this could have been a really great moment for Gabby Gabby to realize, okay, it wasn't the voice box after all. I don't need this. I didn't need to take this from someone. I think in this moment, she should have given the voice box back to Woody because honestly, no matter how they try to tell me that he freely gave it to her, no, <laughs> she blackmailed him. She stole it from him. And she could have just accepted her fate as a broken toy. This would have taught a lesson that you need to be comfortable in your own skin, that you were made the way that you were made to be, but it gets even better. I have an even better ending after this point. So now let's jump to the very end where she actually gets her kid, that little girl at the carnival, the girl who was scared and crying and couldn't find her way. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about this right now. Can you see it? <laughs> How much more touching and amazing would this ending have been if instead of her having a voice box, she didn't have a voice box and she goes to that girl and she consoles that girl and she helps that girl and it turns out that little girl is deaf and that's one of the reasons why the little girl was so scared and she was having a hard time finding her parents this girl could have found gabby gabby and loved her just the way that she was she didn't need a voice box and this really could have set a message that sometimes things happen in your life and you don't understand the reason why until years later. And the reason why Gabby Gabby never had a functioning voice box was because she was never meant to. She was destined for this one girl 50 years later. I think this would have been such a great ending. It would have had an incredible message and moral, and then also would have given a little bit more representation to those with disabilities. I don't like Toy Story 4 at all, but I really like this version of Toy Story 4. I would love to do a part two of this video, so let me know in the comments below and we can keep the conversation going. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell because I'm gonna be doing a ton more of these fun Disney Pixar animation videos. I have some really, really good ones coming out for you in the future and you won't want to miss them. So that's all I have for you today, Disney fans. And until next time, we are the Rotoscopers. Even though it's just me. Okay, just cut this. Like, let's just get, get with the program. Just start talking. Don't tell them what you're gonna tell them. While I think all of these endings, that rope light that just loves to randomly turn on, I don't know. Um, Rip Raff, Street Rat, I don't buy that. If only they look closer. Oh, what's that called? Uh, one jump.